Welcome to Root Stem and welcome to the basics of miniature building and painting and today we're going to be looking at building and prepping your miniatures. So I'm going to start off this video, if you've not seen the previous video about the tools that you need, uh, just watch the video previous, hopefully there's a link below, if not it'll be on the um, painting playlist that should actually appear, that's appeared up there at some point. Um, Basically, I'm going to be doing some terminators. These are Games Workshop's plastic terminators. So I'm going to be doing for the plastic range because majority of models nowadays tend to be plastic. You don't. It's very rare that you actually get a metal metal model now, unless you order something specific or if you play um, one of Wild West games that actually has quite a few metal models. I can't remember what it's called. Um, but we are going to start off with some plastic. So we're actually going to start off, we're going to clip away, we're going to basically pick this particular set of legs and we're going to clip these legs away from the sprue. So I'm zooming in as best as I possibly can for this one. And when you're clipping away from the sprue, I'm going to show, well in fact I'm going to do two lots. I'm going to do one with a pair of clippers, which is what you should be using to clip these away. And then I'm going to show you another technique using a scalpel blade. So always try and find i always find it best to find the finish point so the finish point if you have a look there the finish point going in is going into the legs so i'm going to just put the tweezers i'm going to put them flat so these are kind of curved at the edges so i'm putting the edge flat against the foot and the reason i'm doing that is if i do it the other way around and i'll show you that in a second but if i just do and then get a satisfying click that means it's cut through if i do it the other way around i'll just turn it over you're gonna get a bit let's just let's come straight off you're gonna get a bit of plastic which you're gonna need to cut off now if you do end up where you do have a bit of plastic where you need to cut off again just make sure that you're gonna get the flat and then you just snip it away so that actually came away from my end of the plastic quite nicely. I'm just going to make sure there's no little tiny bits on the top. And now I'm going to show you how to do that using a craft knife. So I've got a set of legs that I'm actually after. I'm going to try and get I'll just do these here. And then I've got my knife. Now this is a scalpel like blade that I got from my local hobby store. I'm making sure that the blade is away from me and I'm using my index finger to apply pressure when using the blade. I have my cutting mat on the underneath and this is to make sure that I don't slip and I don't accidentally cut my fingers off. So I'm going to hold the plastic sprue in place with my other hand. I am left handed which is why I'm doing it this way. I'm going to put the blade there on a nice big bit of the actual blade if i'm doing it on the edge there's a good chance i might snap that little bit especially if you're using cheaper blades using an exacto knife you probably don't need to do this but i'm doing it there and i push you can feel resistance and then it'll cut through and then of course if you've got your mat on there it's going to go straight into the cutting mat and that's going to cut straight off the piece now the back end of the legs, I'm pretty much not going to want to do them from that side. I'm going to want to do it from the other side because it's going to be easier for me to cut through. That is quite a distance for me, safety wise. That's going to be better, but this is going to be a bit harder. Now because that's a thicker piece, I'm going to actually hack at it like hack at it more like a saw. So I'm going to come at it from an edge. Again, I'm cutting away from my uh, my hand, possibly towards my legs because of a desk, but the desk should be able to protect me from this. So. So push in and down and then back and forth there we go and then the same on this you can see it's not the greatest thing trying to use a blade this blade might be a bit blunt as well Let's try and saw it through and there we go making sure again that it's the thickest part and I've got hold of the blade with my hand so nothing is getting anywhere and that will then take the legs off the sprue using a craft knife. So basically get the rest of the items off and then once we've done all this we need to look at getting it all 
kind of shaded. Well, we're getting it all filed down. So what I've done is I've cut the legs out so far. I have the back of the bodies and I have the front of the bodies. Now you could cut all your pieces out if you want to. I'm keeping mine on the sprue. The reason I'm keeping mine on the sprue, such as the weapons and everything else, is because I'm going to paint each of these off. Now you don't have to do this. You can assemble everything together, no problem. What I'm going to be doing is to be part building, I'm going to be uh, not assembling all of it together, majority of it, but I think I'm going to keep the arms, the shoulder pads, the head. Um, they're going to be off of the model. I might well stick some of these on there. These are the purity seals. I'm probably going to stick a couple on there just to break up the legs. But first off, I've cut these out and now we're going to need to trim them. So you can trim them using your trusty file. I'm also going to be looking at the craft knife as well. And then we've got my little file, which I got from this very strange, peculiar, which has got a nice file there, file there, strange, peculiar piece of equipment I've had for years. So what I'm going to do, the reason I like this big file, is this big file can be pushed and you can sort of have it like this. And Especially with the bottom of Space Marine's feet, if you get hold of the uh, monitor, it's probably going to be better off me doing it this way around, but you can graft it like this, but I'm left handed. So you get the bottom of the miniature, and then you kind of put it flush as best you can, and then file. This will file both feet at the same time. And it allow both feet to become the same level and smooth. There we are. Now this little nubbing bit here, I can't feel anything, but I'm still just going to run the file across it uh, just to make sure that it is nice and smooth. On the arms themselves, I'm going to possibly just get a little bit of craft knife in. Thumb against the knife and away from you, I'm just going to right across the top. Now this will get rid of any excess large chunks that might be there just be very careful with your fingers always good for bracing your hands you can see that and that will allow that to have been filed and then you can using this file or the, the larger file using the edge just gently run that across just to make sure that it is flush. Now these pieces are a bit more tricky, they've got a bit of a curve to it. Again, I'm just going to get the craft knife. You can see it from there. Just be careful not to hurt yourself. And I'm you normally use the bigger bit of the blade, but because this is quite a soft piece, I can use the tiny edge I'm just going across the top. Here, maybe a bit more difficult. You kind of got a gouge in there. Now what I'm going to do, because this has got a very thin file edge, I'm just going to run that across both sections, being very careful not to file the other areas down. Let's see this. Now because that's got a nice blank edge there, I'm going to put that against the plastic, meaning that I'm not filing items I shouldn't be. And once you've got all of that done, you're going to be ready for the next stage. So the next stage, once you've filed, is we're going to get rid of these mold lines. Now you don't have to, especially if you're a newer player. I'm going to move my arm. These mold lines here. You don't have to if you're a newer player, but if you're like me, and you like to try and get it right. Now, I just use my scalpel blade, and I actually use the blade itself, and I put my thumb behind the blade. And I'm trying to get it so you guys can see, because I'm left handed, so it's a little bit weird. And then I just gently scrape away the actual mold line. These happen because the two parts sometimes are slightly misaligned. So as you can see, that gets rid of it. And there'll be mold lines up the actual models themselves, so best thing to do is just to try and
try and get rid of it as best as you possibly can. You'll probably get some on the little holding bit here. A bit like scraping something off. And that should be about right. I'm not doing it too expertly. But that will get rid of the mold lines from the plastics. So once you've got rid of your mold lines, you just need to start assembling the model together. Now remember, I'm only assembling the body and the legs um, because the arms are going to be doing separately and the head and everything else are going to be doing separately. I'll come to a particular video to show you how I prep myself for spraying. Now, these legs are going to be glued onto the plastic base. So we've got a plastic base, we've got plastic legs. If you're using resin bases, you're going to need your super glue. Because we're using the plastic base, we need the plastic glue. So, what you do, all you're doing is putting plastic glue on one half of the surface. As in this one, we're just putting it on the feet. Now I always give the actual feet just a, maybe, maybe like a couple of minutes maybe, um, well a minute or two at least, just to make sure that we've got in slightly tacky, and then put them onto the base, making sure you get it right where you need to be. Now plastic glue, just to make you aware, the bond is pretty strong once it's dry, because what it does, it actually melts the plastic and creates a solid bond between it. That's the idea between it. I've already gone through and done the bodies. So I've already run the plastic glue through them. They're already attached. Now, sometimes with your base, you might get, that's quite a flat base, quite a nice base. Sometimes, as you can see here, you get, like, I don't know if that's some from like molding injection, maybe. Uh, if you get anything like that, and it sticks up and you can feel it, just get your file, and of course, just run it across. Don't be worried about this particular point in time on filling it. When you come to do your bases, that's when you're going to fill that point. Once you're happy, this will still be malleable. So it's always better to do several at a time, so that you're getting, you know, several actual pieces done rather than just one. The reason for that is because that will need time to be able to glue. It's not like super glue. Super glue can, especially with an activator can be dry pretty quick but uh, pl uh, plastic glue or polystyrene cement as it's normally known you can just try and keep it on the side and once it's dry it'll be fine so do the rest of the legs and then of course you can attach your bodies now i'm going to be actually gluing the bodies to the legs what i've done is turned all the bodies upside down and i'm going to put the poly cement right in the middle of it and I'm going to kind of go across to each one in a couple of drops. Oop, that's one over it. Doesn't matter. Let's do it in a minute. It's a minute or two. Now, the reason I put them next to each particular base is because, advanced wise, some of these terminators are going to be magnetized, which I'll show you in a second. I'm just going to give them a minute or two. Be aware that if this dribbles, if this runs down something, because it melts the plastic, it can distort some of the features. It can create a fantastic bond, but if you put too much on, it can sometimes distort the features. Now I know that I'm wanting heavy weapons with this one. I'm making sure that I'm gonna give adequate space down this side, to make sure that the actual you know, can have the heavies whereas the rest and not really heavy the heavy weapon and therefore I can just put each one together as normal and there we're just going to give them a minute or two just to dry now, before we go from this tutorial, we're going to look at adding little tiny bits. These are the pieces uh, from the extra screw. And then I've taken the backpack as well. Now, the reason I'm putting the backpack on now is effectively it doesn't really 
it's going to be easier for me to do that on a model than it is off a model. So I'm part building the, like I said, the arms, shoulder pads, the heads are going to be off the actual figures while I'm, I'm waiting, you know, getting these prepared. But these pieces can be affixed to the model now. So I'm going to clean them up, cut the file, cut the knife, and then we're going to look at gluing these to our pieces. So for this, now that I've cleaned them up, we're going to be using some other equipment. Now these are kind of like my tweezers. I mentioned them in the other video, sorry for the shine. Um, we're going to be putting the banner and everything else onto these models. I've already put the bit of the polystyrene cement into the sergeant body. So I'm just going to fix that. And it's always best with these to have them flat. So you can try and make sure that if you put a banner on, it is going to stick flat now. Very awkward when I'm looking at this. <laughs> is it still soft? It's not. I don't know, dear. What might happen if that does happen? Is you can't get it back on. The best thing to do is just to leave it. Now, sometimes, if you're wanting that not to fall over, let's do it again. Something. Mm, that's going that way a little bit. Put something next to it. Rest it against it. Um, I have known people use when they're doing big tanks. Uh, you know, sort of like polystyrene cementing all the pieces together to get big elastic bands, wrap them around, make sure that the actual thing, the, the vehicle itself, doesn't move. Now, what we're going to do with these pieces, these pieces are going to be very, very awkward to put onto the model. So, we're going to have a look at where we want them. For example, maybe there, or with this being the double one, I might want to put it onto the sergeant frame. Of course, this one, I want to put that onto here and it is awkward especially when mine because mine pop open so what i'm going to basically do is i'm going to turn them over and i'm going to hold the piece and i'm going to put the glue onto the bit straight off now it won't stick it shouldn't stick to the metal it's not plastic upon plastic contact. And then, find my area. I'll place it on. Not too difficult. It's better with tweezers. I'll admit, I'm probably not using the best tool in the world for this. Let's double. It's not super glue, I'm not going to get my hand stuck to it. It's always the worry. Now, the other piece I'm going to stick onto that model. I'm going to wait for that to dry first. There we go. There on, that should now be it. So, we've got our five basic models upright. These are quite easy to build. So, are some of the other space room kits, to be honest. Anything more could you're still going to be able to do it. Uh, some of the more fiddly stuff. Um, when you're going to cleaning up with the mold lines, you may want to just have a look to see whether or not it's necessary, especially if you're just beginning or you're just starting out. And then maybe avoid some of the trimming. You don't have to do the, uh, the mold lines, it just makes the, the model look better. And if you've got some serious deviations, then you might need to speak to whoever made the actual models and tell them, look, these castings are not the greatest. Um, so that's getting up to this particular stage. We've got the glue done, we've got the uh, trimming done, the plastics have been done, and we're getting ready now to basically start, or for me, anyway, in my process, starting to get towards painting. And we're gonna be looking at prepping the model ready for painting, prepping your, your, any sort of like undercoat that you've got ready for painting. We're gonna be taking all that in the next actual video. And just to whet your appetite for future videos, there we go, we've got uh, my, this is going to be my heavy weapon designated model. And that is magnetized. And I will look into magnetizing with you guys. Yes, basically how I've done that is to cut underneath. 
and I've made that a magnetised weapon. And then the rest of these arms are going to be magnetised as well. And that should, should allow us to have a really corking alternative heavy weapon guy that can actually have his weapons changed out. But we'll take that up later. That'll be in a more advanced video later down the line. So we've got us five basics. Join me uh, hopefully next week. And we're going to take you into prepping your models ready for spraying. And then we're going to go through the process of undercoating. Until that point, I've been Root Stem. I am Root Stem. I'm Paul. And we will see you next time. Like, share, subscribe.